A couple of days ago, I finished up rebuilding these Tokiko brakes on my free Kawasaki ZX6 Ninja. If you haven't seen this bike before, you should know that it's been sitting outside uncovered in a neighbor's yard for well over a decade. Now, I had no intention of restoring it, but what else was I going to do this winter? Take up ice climbing? Cross-country skiing? I think not. I installed the rebuilt calipers and had hoped my front master cylinder would still be okay. The first squeeze of the lever proved me wrong and the piston went into the cylinder housing but did not come out. So this free bike is getting a little more expensive today as I rebuild the brake master cylinder on rod rides and wrenches. And stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you how to bleed a fully drained dual caliper brake system quick and easy. Rebuilding a master cylinder is one of the easier jobs I've done for this bike. I often wonder why riders will ignore a leaking master cylinder when replacing the guts of the brake is so straightforward. If you're taking on this job yourself, good on you. The kit I ordered from K&L Automotive in San Jose was a complete rebuild kit with a new piston as well as seals. The beauty of this full kit is that the outer fluid seal is already on the piston, right out of the kit. Not that you have to go this route with a simple leak in a master cylinder. I, however, wasn't going to take any chances with internal damage and wanted to replace all the components for this front brake. The only issue I had with this job was removing the clip that retains the piston in the cylinder bore. The interior snap ring in this brake from my Kawasaki has e-clip type tangs that are there to act as a brake piston stopper and prevent it from pushing past the clip. But these tangs grab onto the seized piston when I squeeze the clip with snap ring pliers. After far too long, it became clear that the seized piston meant using the snap ring pliers was pointless. I doused the master cylinder brake ports with WD-40 and set to work removing the clip by alternative methods. With the snap ring out, the piston soon followed. Now take a look at the crap all over this piston. I think we found the problem. Cleaning up the reservoir and cylinder was the next step, removing corrosion and gummed up varnish with brake clean and elbow grease. Finding elbow grease on sale is tough, Unfortunately, I keep giving it away for free. Ready to assemble, I lubed up the parts and the cylinder bore with some fresh brake fluid. I don't want to put these components in the cylinder dry. I would run the risk of damaging the new seals. First part in is the spring and plunger seal. Next, I grabbed the circle clip with the appropriate pliers and inserted the clip and piston into the cylinder body. Checking to make sure the piston is locked in place, the rubber dust boot can be installed over the end of the piston. I used some brake fluid to lubricate the boot and help get it over the piston and then make sure it's seated properly. All in all, pretty easy. But the next step can be frustrating. And the first time I reinstalled a fully bled brake system, I felt just that. Getting fluid moving through an empty master cylinder can be difficult. The trick is to get the fluid pressure built up and a steady stream of fluid exiting from the ports before attaching the brake line and banjo bolt. To do this, I pump the lever a few times to get the fluid from the reservoir down into the cylinder. You can see some air bubbles escaping from the compensating port. I then cover the master cylinder port with my thumb and pump the brake lever. Holding it down, I release my thumb from the port and let air escape. Covering the port to make sure it's airtight, I can then release the brake lever and do this process over again until brake fluid flows naturally through gravity. I now attach the upper brake line and banjo bolt. I leave the lower brake line off the calipers until fluid starts to drip through and only then attach them to the calipers. At this point, the bleeder valves on the calipers are open and gravity is slowly filling the system with brake fluid. Of course, brake fluid has to be continually replenished in the reservoir and if it runs dry while I'm attaching brake lines or opening bleeder valves, I will have to start all over again. Once fluid is running out of the bleeder valves, I close them off and can go back to the master cylinder banjo bolt, pumping up the cylinder and then cracking the banjo bolt open to release the last bit of air at the top of the line. Hanging on to the brake lever, keeping it fully depressed until the banjo bolt is retightened. Now I'm not done here yet, but doing this intermediary step now will allow more fluid to flow from the reservoir rather than just building up vacuum in the lines once the vacuum bleeder is attached. Hey, if you're learning something today or just enjoying the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't be afraid to share it with your friends on your Facebook page, a forum or Reddit subgroup. If you're new here, hit subscribe because it's free and will help you find more useful videos for you and your bike from the channel. All this does actually help me out and I really do appreciate it. So thanks for watching. 
when bleeding calipers start with the one furthest away from the master cylinder. Now this isn't going to get the brakes fully bled. Just move more volume through the lines and suck the small air bubbles down to the lower part of the brake system. Again, all through this process, fluid has to be added to the reservoir to replenish the fluid coming out the brakes and filling the system. After 8 or 10 pumps on the vacuum bleeder and the vacuum pressure subsides, I remove the vacuum pump and catch reservoir. Holding the bleeder hose upright that's attached to the caliper bleeder valve, the hose slowly starts to fill with brake fluid. Once a few inches of fluid are in the hose, I can squeeze the brake lever and hold it down. A of air bubbles start to emerge from the caliper. I hold on to the brake until these bubbles move all the way up the hose and can escape. When I release the lever, the clean brake fluid in the hose will get sucked back into the system. If I don't let the air bubbles up the hose and escape, I run the risk of just sucking the air back into the caliper. Once the bubbles stop flowing from the caliper when I squeeze the brake lever, I can remove the bleeder hose and close the bleeder valve. But I'm not done just yet. Bleeding the brake system this way as opposed to just using a vacuum bleeder ensures I don't pull any air bubbles past the seals in the master cylinder. And I actually find this works faster and does a much better job. Final step is to go back to the master cylinder and do a few more pump and bleeds at the banjo bolt. This final bleed builds high pressure at the master cylinder so that the brake lever feels firm and doesn't need a whole lot of travel to get the brakes working. I know I'm done at the master cylinder, when brake fluid squirts with force when I loosen the banjo bolt. Now, you don't need a completely seized master cylinder like this one before you rebuild it. Fuck. If your brake cylinder is leaking, you can easily change the seals and get it back together working on your bike in about an hour. If you need more tips on fixing a spongy brake lever or want to know more about how the master cylinder works, check out this video from the channel. Good luck on your own master rebuild, and until next time, be sure to ride safe.